Chapter 18. I didn't get much sleep that night. I spent a few hours helping Rig look over Embot. He wanted to check each bit of damage. Eventually, though, I started to get bleary-eyed. Rig was still going strong, so I rolled out a mat and used blood letter for a pillow. Every time I dozed off, I'd eventually awake to hear Rigamarole speaking to the ship. So, you're a machine, but you can think. All machines think, in that they execute responses to input. I am simply far more complex in my executable responses and in the inputs I can recognize. More dozing. Can explain to us what is wrong? My memory banks are faulty, so I cannot offer more than cursory explanations, but perhaps those will be sufficient. I turned over to my side and dipped back down into sleep. Do not know where I originated, although a fragment of a memory implies I was created by human beings. I am not certain whether other species of sapient life exist. I believe I could answer that once. Around six in the morning, I rubbed my eyes and sat up. Rig lay below an open access panel, fiddling with something underneath the ship. I flopped down next to him, yawning. So? It's incredible, he said. Have you told Cobb about it? Not yet. Why delay? I mean, what if this thing can make the difference in finding the Krell? Theoretically, I said, humans had this thing when they first fought the Krell. It didn't help then. I would note, Embot said, that it is listening. And, I asked the ship, yawning again, and it is generally considered bad form for humans to speak of one who is present as if they are not. I can't make you out, Embot, Rig said, sitting up. You say you don't care about things like that, right? Obviously I don't. I'm a logical machine with only a thin veneer of simulated emotions. Okay, Rig said. That makes sense. It's still rude, Embot added. I looked at Rig, then gestured toward the cockpit. So we have a magical talking starship with mysterious technology. Do you want to help me fix it? On our own, Rig asked. Why? So we can keep it and fly it. You're in the DDF now, Spin. You don't need an outdated, broken-down ship. Still here, Embot noted. Just saying. I lean forward. Rig, I'm not in the DDF. I'm in Cobb's class. So you'll graduate. I don't care how few people he passes. You'll be one of them. And then, I asked, feeling cold, expressing a fear that I had never voiced, but one that had haunted me since that first day. Cobb says he can let anyone he wants into his class, but if I pass, his authority ends there, Rig. Rig looked down at the wrench in his hand. I'm worried that the Admiral will deny me a ship, I said. Worried she'll find some petty reason to kick me out once Cobb can't protect me anymore. Worried I'll lose it, Rig. The sky. I looked toward the ship, glowing with lights along its side. This is old, yes, but it's also my freedom. He still looked skeptical. Think about how fun it would be, I said, poking around inside an ancient ship. Think of what mysteries we could discover. Maybe Embot is all outdated technology, but maybe not. Won't it be fun to at least try to fix him on our own? If that doesn't work out, we can always turn him in later. Uh, fine, Rig said. All right, stop giving me the hard sell. I'll try, Spin. I grinned at him. Rig looked at the ship. I worry this is beyond what we can do. Those boosters are ruined. We can't just weld something like that back together. I'm sure there will be other parts that will need to be replaced or fixed using tools we don't have. He thought for a moment. Though, what? I asked. One of my job offers, he said. It's from the elite engineering corps, the people who oversee repairing the starfighters, and the people who develop new designs. They've got the best labs, the best equipment. I nodded eager. That sounds perfect. I was thinking of taking their offer anyway, he said. They told me I could come in these next two months, intern with them, learn my way around the shops. They were very impressed with my test scores and with my understanding of schematics and advanced engineering. Rig, that is awesome. I'm not promising anything, he said, but well, maybe if I bring them the right questions, I can get them to show me how to fix certain pieces of MBOT. I'll have to do it without making them suspicious. Regardless, we'll still need spare parts, at least one full-size booster. I'll find us one, somehow. Just don't tell me where you get it, he noted. Maybe when this whole thing blows up in our faces, I can claim I didn't know about any possible thefts you might be up to. A small decal on that power matrix reads, Property of the White, a Weight Family, Embot said healthily. It looks to have been ripped, quite crudely, from a small chassis. Blue finish, judging by the scratched off paint on the corner. Rig sighed, Jorgen's car? Really? I plastered on a smile. The internship will take a chunk of each day, he said, rubbing his chin, but I should be able to dedicate the rest to this if I need to. I'll have to tell my parents something. Tell them the internship is super demanding, I suggested, and that it will take the majority of your time. But, Embot said, that's not true, is it? Nah, I said, but who cares? I care, the machine said. Why would you say something that isn't true? You can simulate emotions, I said, but not lies. I appear to be missing some code, Embot said. Curious. Oh, what an interesting fungus.
I frowned and glanced to the side to where Doomslug had crawled up on a rock. Scud, Rick said. There's some weird stuff up here close to the surface. He shivered. Can you do something about that thing? That thing is named Doomslug, I said, and she's my mascot. Don't hurt her while I'm away. I walked over, grabbing my pack. I need to get to class. You going to head below? Nah, Rick said. I suspect I might not be back for a while. So I left a note, or I suspected I might not be back for a while. So I left a note for my parents saying I was going to an employment meeting. They'll just assume I got up before them. I can head down later. I want to have a look at his wiring first. Great, I said. If you're still here when I get back from class each day, I'll join you in the repairs. If not, leave me notes telling me what I can do to help. I hesitated. Remember, I'm kind of a dunderhead at this, so you might want to give me the easy but annoying tasks. Rick smiled once more, settling down on a rock, looking at Embot. There was a light in his eyes, one I remembered from back when we started planning to become pilots. In that moment, seeing Rick like that again, I had my first real impression that this might work. Somehow, this plan might just work. Wait, Embot said, you're leaving me with him? I'll be back tonight, I promised. I see. Could you come to the cockpit so we can speak in private? I looked at the ship, frowning. I don't want to explain in public why I like you better than the engineer, Embot added. If he heard me go on at length regarding his irresolvable flaws, he might feel belittled or despondent. Oh, that part is going to be lovely, Rig said, rolling his eyes. Maybe we can find a way to shut off the personality. I pulled myself up into the cockpit. The canopy moved down and sealed with a whoosh. It's all right, I said to Embot. Rig is good people. He'll take, good, he'll take care of you. I am, of course, simply emulating the way humans play irrita irrational favorites over one another. But could you not go? I'm sorry. I've got to go learn to fight the Krell. I frowned at the tone in the robot's voice. What's wrong? I told you. Rig is a good... I am willing to accept that he is until evidence proves otherwise. This is a problem. I appear to have lost my master. I can be your new master. I cannot change masters without proper authentication codes, he said, which I just realized I do not remember. The problem, however, is larger than this mere fact. I do not remember my mission. I do not know where I came from. I do not know my purpose. If I were a human, I would be scared. How did I respond to that? A frightened starship? Don't worry, I said. We'll give you a new purpose, destroying the Krell. You're a fighter, Embot. I'm sure that name stands for something exciting. Murderbot, mayhem bot, massacre bot. That's it. I'm sure. You're a frightening, all-powerful death ship designed to fry the Krell and save humanity. I do not feel very frightening, he said. I do not feel like a death ship. We'll deal with that, I promise. Trust me. And can I trust that those words are not a falsehood, like the one to tell the engineer's parents? Well, that came back to bite me faster than I'd expected. I must ask you, Embot said so and more softly, not to tell any others about me. I assumed you'd understood this earlier when I explained my orders. I am supposed to lie low, which is a colloquialism for remaining inconspicuous. I should not have told the engineer. Or you should not have told the engineer. And how would we repair you otherwise? I do not know, Spence. Spence, I am an artificial intelligence, a computer. I must obey my orders, please. You can't turn me over to your DDF. You must not even speak of me to anyone else. Well, that was going to be present a problem. I wanted to get this thing flying, and once I did, that would mean flying it to help in the fight against the Krell. And if we couldn't fix it, well, I'd need to turn it over. Regardless of what I thought of Ironsides, I couldn't just sit on this ship forever. Not if it could mean the difference between the survival and extinction of humanity. I had opened my mouth to argue with Embot further when a set of lights started flashing on the dashboard. Multiple atmospheric incursions have been detected by my short-range sensors, Embot said. Debris has begun falling toward the planet with 43 ships following. 43, I said, glancing at his sensor readout. Short range for him was apparently still pretty long by our standards. Wow, you can spot them even in a debris fall? Easily. Proof already that the DDF could use this technology. Our scanners weren't as accurate as that. That knowledge immediately made me uncomfortable. Still, 43 Krell? The maximum they ever fielded was 100 ships, so this was an impressive force. I hit the button to open the canopy, then hauled myself out and hopped off onto a rock. Krell, I said to Rig, a big flight. Are we in danger here? No, they're coming from the other direction, but the cadets have been training long enough now that Ironsides has started sending them up for real as support units during combat. Firestorm flight went two days ago. So? So I'd better get going, just in case.